I'm, uh, I've always been uh, sort of deeply interested in understanding how children uh, learn uh, mathematics. And uh, I'm hopeful that uh, eventually we will be able to build a computer simulation of a child learning algebra such that our simulation will be able to reproduce uh, the, uh, the learning achievements of a child uh, and also give us in the process information about uh, where the difficulties might be in learning mathematics. In my uh, early years, I sort of uh, <coughs> flailed around for different approaches that might be able to maintain the rigor uh, that I saw in the Hollian research, but deal with the complexities of human cognition. Uh, I was initially attracted to uh, research in mathematical psychology. It seemed a promising approach to that. Uh, <coughs> I decided to go to Stanford University to work with a famous mathematical psychologist, Gordon Bauer. Interestingly, the first day when I arrived in his office, he informed me that mathematical psychology was dead and that I should go into artificial intelligence. At that time in the late 60s, uh, artificial intelligence was a growing and exciting field. And um, essentially, I discovered in, <coughs> the, uh, in the methods of that particular field an approach that one could uh, adopt and adapt to understanding human cognition. And, and in particular, uh, deal with issues of learning, which still were central to, uh, uh, to my interest. Now we've essentially taken uh, the various modules of ACT R. There are roughly speaking eight modules in ACT R. And we've been able to map them onto eight separate brain regions. When one of these modules is active in doing a particular task, it is going to <coughs> uh, require essentially increased metabolic expenditure in, a, in the particular region that subserves that module. And uh, what we can track with the fMRI data is essentially signals of that increased metabolic expenditure. So we can essentially track uh, uh, when particular components of the overall cognitive system are involved. It's one of the things that I'm proud about the, the ACTAR theory is that we have been able to use it as a basis for uh, developing what are called intelligent tutoring systems, uh, which are used for instruction of uh, mathematics. Uh, they are used widely uh, in the United States now, and they've been fairly effective in teaching uh, children uh, particularly children at the high school level, uh, the mathematics that they're learning. One of the things that's really frustrated me in a certain sense is that we've built these artifacts uh, which lead to successful learning in children, and yet we don't really have a deep theory of why they work. And so I would like to develop a, a theory that could really explain why these intelligent tutoring systems work. <laughs>